Hello folks, this is Reverend Thomas Rader again. Last chapter we looked at, or passage, we looked at faith versus ritualism or, hmm, what's the word I wanted to use? Obeying laws to make your way, works, there we go, works and trying to enter into the kingdom of God. And we found out it was faith, not works, because faith in Christ is what gives us a cleansing heart, a forgiveness of our sins, and a new spirit to control ourselves where we couldn't before. Today we're going to, or this chapter, verse Excuse me. Chapter 16, we're going to be looking at, again, the Spirit's work throughout the book of Acts using the apostles and other people. And this uh, starts getting a little heavy towards the end of the book. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported by the brethren that were in, at Lystra in Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the city, they delivered them the decree for to keep that was ordained to the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone throughout Pergra and the region of Galatia, and what forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they would come to Mysa, they essayed to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by, Melsa came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to the preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, losing from Troyos, we came with a straight course to Samothia, and the next day to Nidopolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were there in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wrought to be made, and we sat down and spoke unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatrica, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. So they came from to Darby and Lystria. And a certain disciple was there by the name of Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess. And she believed, but his father was a Greek. Oh, here we have the first problem. What is a Jew being married to a Greek? You know what the stance was for that. 
They would make themselves impure by marrying outside their nationality. Verse 2, which was re well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystria and Iconium. Gossip. This didn't do anybody any good. But this is what we Christians do is we talk about people. Say things we shouldn't. Spread rumors that we shouldn't. It might have been true, but still, we need to tame our tongue more. Him, verse 3, would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. That means that this young man, even though he was already a Jew, would be circumcised, even if he already knew Christ, because there's nothing wrong with a Jew being circumcised. There was nothing against that. Only the Gentiles, as we saw in the previous chapter, chapter 15. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them and decrees for to keep that were ordained the apostles and elders were at Jerusalem. Certain things that they had to keep as a Jew, even though it wasn't for their salvation, it was just some of the traditions. And so were the churches established in faith and increased in number daily. I love this when I see this. Increase daily. It's hard to get a church nowadays to increase weekly, let alone daily. Sometimes I wonder why that is. Is it us? Now when they had gone throughout Pergaria and the region of Galatia, and were fit for a bidding of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. We don't know how that is done. But somehow, the Holy Ghost spoke to these guys or threw obstacles in their way through the use of people, and animals, who knows, to stop somebody from going on the path that they do. It could be that inward voice, that conscience. Today it could be this book here telling us, changing our direction. After they were come to Missa, they essayed to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Strike number two. They can't go here. Verse 8, And they, passing by Misra, came down to Troas. Verse 9, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. As far as we know, only Paul received this vision. Again, we're not told how it is, but usually when we see vision in Scripture, it's either a dream that is so real or a powerful dream that hmm, is so real and convicting that we must follow it. 
verse 10, And after he had seen the vision, immediately we... Uh, okay, there's a change in nouns here. Verse 10, and after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Here's a change. We. Who is that we? Of course, the author of this book, Dr. Luke. He has joined the mission team now. Assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Aha, there's the reason why they haven't gone to those other places. The Lord wants them to go to a specific place that he is prepared. Therefore, losing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothica, and the next day, to Neapolis. Sounds like they're on a ship now. And shipping, sailing on a ship can be dangerous depending on what type of year and depend on which route you take. And from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, Macedonia and a colony and were we in that city abiding certain days? Doesn't say how many. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spoke unto the woman which resorted there, thither. Jews speaking to a woman. Strange. Doesn't say if these are Jewish women, and even if they are, it's not accustomed to be doing that. You know how the time period back then treated women? Verse 14, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Theatrica, which worship God, heard us. Let's stop right there. A certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple. That material in those days was very expensive, which means she was in the upper class of society. She had money. She had uh, no tire. Excuse me. She was known, respected. Which is okay. Because we read in the next the rest of that verse which worshiped God and heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. Again, we can't open our hearts. The Lord does it. He draws us to his Son. No one comes to the Father but through the Son, and God brings us to the Son. that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. She was listening intently to words of Paul that he had spoke to her, which we have no idea other than that he's always preaching Christ. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, if you had judged me to be faithful, 
to the Lord, Come unto my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Doesn't say how long, how many days they were there with her, but I can assure you that it was probably a great spiritual awakening. You see, God wanted to use this woman. She has connections quite a bit. She has respect and she can go where people of lesser wealth and social class can go. But it doesn't mean that she's any better than them. She just has an opportunity to witness to others through her skills during that time period. Now, it doesn't pe mean people of the lower class are really lower, not in God's eyes. They might be in our eyes, which is wrong, because we're all the same. But it was important for the disciples to come here and meet with her and others, and I'm sure that there was more going on, but it doesn't mention here how many was added to daily or anything like that. So the point of this matter is the Spirit works in all classes of people, all social orders, whether you're rich, poor, been in prison, been homeless, you're important to God. Whatever he has done for the greatest, he does for the least of us. Lord, may we not classify people in social, intellectual, and financial classes. We're all the same. One of us is not better than the other. You love us all. You died on the cross for all of us. And we have no right to think lesser of those around us. God help us to love each and every person. In Jesus' name, amen.